Good evening. I thought I'm going to show you this on how this actually works. You have now a front row seat. And this is the unit I bought in January. And this is the brand new one, which says on there that's a 010 slash 001. And um, I'm going to compare this to this one I got on eBay that came in today. And that is a 010 002. They're both 408.202. This one was made in uh, June of 1986. And this is what we call one of the aftermarket um, units or the gray market ones, which don't have to receive the Spence number on it, but they're exactly the same. And you can hear it. But here you can see this now with zero volts. And if you have read the manual, it will tell you in the manual that the control range needs to be between zero to nine to one amp. And here's what I'm going to show you is, and this is where the problem is, is that some of these units will not work. So you can see this, we're bringing the voltage up. We're now at 340 milliamps, 350 milliamps. And you can see our little hub is moving closer and closer and closer. And if you have hooked this up to your car, you know that your control unit will stop at 990 milliamps. And what do you see? We had four volts and we still have a gap. Now let me see at what current this gap is actually going to disappear and it's going to be completely closed. Right about here, let me go back. Yeah, we're still having, there it is. 1.4 amps. So these things, uh, they must have had some other control units or they were adjusted with the spring the wrong way. What you're seeing now, it is basically closed. See this? Open, close, open, close. But at 990 milliamps or 1 amp, this unit is not closed. This unit is not closed. And that means you would have to adjust this with the spring pulling the spring out that this is closed. This will idle at 1000 RPM as it is. Let me hook up the other unit. This is probably the easiest way to test them. You can see this nicely here. Right, let me put the minus in. Put the plus in. Okay, and here we go. We got the light on. It is fully open. Let me see if I can rotate this down. That's where we can see it better. Here we go. And it is moving. And it is moving. And it is moving. And this is now one amp. The same gap. So the new Mercedes-Benz one is exactly identical to the other one, to the original one, the, the aftermarket 1986. This unit I got here was manufactured in, on uh, May 20, in May 2013. And you can see this, that's the Mercedes-Benz one and that has a 010001 and the other one on here on top is a 010002. And at four volts, neither one of the two closes. Let me just go up a little bit, make this better to one. You still can see light. And let's see when this actually is going to close. There we go. Let me open it up. One point four amps. And if the control unit brings out only one amp, they will never close. And therefore, neither one of the two will work right in the older cars. Um, all three control units, idle speed control units I have, will put out at the maximum one volt. And neither one of these units, the three units I have, can close the brand new valve 
or this valve. The only way you can adjust this is by adjusting the mixture control, which you're not supposed to be doing, to move the plate either further up or lean it out so the RPM actually drops down. But that is not the correct way. I do not know why these units need 1.4 amps when it says in the manual that the regulation is between 750 to 1 amp. And that means at 1 amp this unit has to close off because that's as much current as you get out. And that's about at 6 volts, so there's a 2 volt difference. Uh, otherwise, this, this, this valve I bought here will work just fine. I'm going to go back up to 1. And you can see there's a gap. And that will mean that you're going to idle at minimum 1000 at this gap, what you're seeing right here. Maybe 950, 1000. So if you buy this one here with the older units, and or this one here I got of eBay for $88, which works perfectly. You can hear it makes the clicks nice and everything. But on both of these units, this one here and this one, even though it's brand new, you have to readjust the spring. Uh, there's no question about it. Let me just show you another thing here. On these two units, let me turn this off. Here, you can see that they're not exactly at the same depth. Or at least they must have pushed in one further than the other. Let me see if we can see this better when we're applying the light here. Yeah. You can see the mechanics in there, the spring and everything. This is the brand new one. And this is the one of eBay. So, yeah, both of them we have to pull the plug out and adjust them that the plate closes at one amp. It is, of course, easier when you have a power supply and you do it like this with the light. And then you pull that out and then, you know, you can just easier adjust that. Uh, I don't want to do it right now, but uh, I don't have a screw right now here that's otherwise, and I don't have my poco to, to pull that out, but uh, maybe I'm going to do another video and show you this on this unit here, and then it will idle at 650, 750, uh, probably 750, 700 uh, with the control unit I got in here. All right, you have a great evening, and uh, this is what you were looking at, is an HP power supply. That's about the only test equipment I usually use is this kind of equipment and you have a great evening.